welcome to our first official podcast. My name is Rob, and joining me on the other end is Ashley. Hi, Ashley. Hi. How are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? Oh, not too bad. We're going to get through this one, and we're going to just make this go uh, as far as we can with it. Today, our topic is famous people who have died or had life-changing head injuries. Some people don't die. They learn how to live with them like the people in our support group does. Absolutely. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give you just a brief synopsis of uh, who we're going to discuss. The number one we're going to start with is Bob Saget. Everybody knows Danny Tanner. He's been around for ages before his unfortunate head injury. Uh, you knew him from Full House. Uh, he was a comedian way before. Uh, that's how he got his start. So, Ashley, give us a little update on what you know about Bob Saget. So, Bob Saget unfortunately passed away. Um, while he was on a comedy tour, he died in his sleep at a hotel. Um, cause of death was from a fall hitting his head, and unfortunately, he did not seek medical treatment. Um, blunt trauma was noted in the autopsy, and it had a huge impact on everyone around the world. There's been multiple tribute videos of Bob Saget, and he's also been honored with donations and offers to help a charity he sat on called the Scleroderma Research Foundation. And he's been involved with that since 2003. So, rest yeah, in peace, Bob sister, Saget. Yeah. Didn't his sister have that disease, I believe? Yes, right. his sister right. had that disease. It's an inflammation disease from what I found online. Yeah. So, yeah, that's that's the tragedy because he was such a great comedian and and he'll be missed. And like you said, there's been so many tribute videos out there. And who didn't grow up with Full House and the Fuller House sequel? So that's that's such a tragedy. America's Home uh, Videos is what I remember as well. So, yeah, I grew up on that too, and I'm, I think he did that, I believe, the same time as he yes, was he doing. Yes, he did. He was very busy back in the nineties. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> the second person, and I have to give my wife kudos on this one because she remembered this person and I didn't, was Natasha Richardson. Now she was married to um, Liam Neeson right mm -hmm. yeah and I don't know very much about her at all and I, she was an actress or I believe but yeah can... so um, a lot of female uh, comedies uh, romance movies uh, made in Manhattan the white countess uh, Nell um, and she was actually the Tony Award winner for the play Chicago yeah and what happened to her she was actually um, in Canada and she was do in a ski lesson um, when she fell and hit her head. She declined medical treatment, um, but after having a severe headache, as we all know, is one of the hallmarks of, you know, a concussion or a head injury, she was admitted to the hospital in Canada. She was then transferred to a hospital in New York City where she fell into a coma and died. Her cause of death was an epidural hematoma due to head injury. Um, and she was honored by having the lights dimmed on Broadway, and there was a lot of prevention of head injuries advocacy done by uh, those close to her after she passed away. Okay. And there was something about her, I believe, that we mentioned before about a rare disease that, or maybe not disease is not the right word, but a rare condition called talk and die syndrome. Yeah, so her case was a rare one. Usually not many people that sustain head injuries get this, but it's basically where you fall into the coma and pass away. So she's a rare um, instance with head injuries, but these things still do happen. So it's very important to be vigilant. Right. And I think that's the one huge takeaway that anyone should know if you suffer a head injury no matter how severe or how unsevere you think it might be, get medical attention. I mean, the worst case scenario is they say, oh, you're fine, go home. But on that off chance that, you know, you have a brain, bre 
brain bleed or, or what have you. I mean, it's just not worth taking the risk of not getting medical treatment. That's the big takeaway we should have from this. Yeah, even if you hit your head and you're not experiencing any symptoms at the time, you should definitely still get checked out because sometimes symptoms take a while uh, to appear or things could worsen over time. So it's best to get treated by a medical professional rather than not get treated. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, and the, this next section is NASCAR, which I will be glad to tell you that I know nothing about NASCAR. A lot of people in my family are huge NASCAR fans. I can name Dale Earnhardt and Dale Earnhardt Jr. and that's about it. My, sorry, my brother-in-law is a huge fan. So uh, shout out to Alex. But yeah, I, I, I know nothing when it comes to NASCAR, but I found this very fascinating because NASCAR has really made uh, the effort to, to step up and prevent brain injuries because we have two on our list NASCAR drivers uh, one plays Alexander and Adam Petty that their injuries changed how NASCAR looked at, at their safety and they did something about it so Absolutely. tell us about Blaze Alexander because that this is fascinating so Blaze Alexander is a NASCAR well was a NASCAR race driver from my home state of PA um, this happened back in 2001 at the Easy Care 100 at Lowe's Motor Speedway. He was involved in a two car accident during lap 63 of the race. He was fighting for the lead position with Kerry Earnhardt for most of the race. During the lap, he had to dodge a lapped car by hitting his brakes, which caused his to catch up with Earnhardt's. Alexander began to inch into the lead when Earnhardt's car made contact with his, sending his car head on into the wall and then back into Earnhardt's car. This caused Earnhardt to flip over onto his roof and slide onto into the grass. I'm sorry, that's a mistake. That's a typo. Um, it caused Blaze Alexander's car to flip over onto the roof and slide into the grass. Uh, after the wreck, Earnhardt, Earnhardt got away unharmed while Alexander was knocked unconscious. Race officials quickly threw out the red flag to send rescue workers onto the track to check on Alexander. Earnhardt had already gotten out of his car and wanted to go check on Alexander because he was a friend of his. However, he was not permitted to do so. Uh, Alexander was taken to the infield care center, pronounced dead, unfortunately, that evening. The cause of his death was a Zillar skull fracture. And the amazing thing that came from his lifelong legacy is the development of the head and neck restraints that you see in the cars nowadays when they, like you can see them filming from the inside or even the outside if you see the cars, you see those head and neck restraints. And that's something NASCAR developed as a result of this unfortunate tragedy, whereas a lot of other sports have not really developed safety precautions. That's fascinating. Yeah, sorry about the phone ring, but the people at home may or may not have heard that because that stuff gets cut out sometimes in the post. So we'll roll with it. We'll we'll figure this stuff out as we go along. <laughs> We're just here to have fun and to also be educational to everyone. Okay, the other one is Blaze Alexander. Or no, 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 no. Adam Petty. Yeah, that's that's a whole other show, isn't it, Ashley? Yeah, we'll cover that on an upcoming podcast because that's definitely something that I we I can definitely speak to. Oh yeah, we all anyone that's in our in our group can attest to the memory. But yeah, Adam Petty, tell us about Adam Petty. Adam Petty was another NASCAR race driver, and the reason I decided to choose two NASCAR race drivers is because of the advocacy that came about these deaths and then NASCAR stepping up and making it safe for drivers to continue with the sport. Um, so this happened the year before Blaze Alexander. It was actually in a practice session for the Bush 200 race at New Hampshire Motor Speedway. This would have been his 48th career Bush Series start. Unfortunately, Petty's throttle got stuck wide open going into the third turn of the track. This caused the car to hit the outside wall virtually head on and it killed him instantly. 
He also suffered from a basilar skull fracture. And the aftermath that came from that was NASCAR developed the kill switch, which my understanding is that it shuts things down if there's an emergency so you do not crash. However, if there are NASCAR fans out there that know more or different, please let us know because I don't want to be giving out false information. Yeah, and that's something that would be interesting to to revisit and because I'd like to know more about how that kill switch works. Mm -hmm. Is it something that the driver has to initiate or does someone on his crew go, oh, there's a problem, we need to kill the engine or how it works. Right. So yeah, that would be interesting to find out. So, you know, anybody that's watching this, if you know, <laughs> drop us a line below, we hit a comment so we can definitely get more information out there about that because that would be interesting to revisit. Um, the next one I wanted to do, and I did some of these out of order, but it doesn't matter, we're gonna go with it. Um, Gary Busey, he is an actor. Well, first of all, there's no order, but that's okay. <laughs> and you know what, anyone that's suffered a brain injury knows there is no order. <laughs> Absolutely there. Okay, Gary Busey. Um, now, here's interesting, I didn't know this because you wrote this in the notes. And he was on the Buddy Holly story. I never even saw that, but I do know the, the story behind Buddy Holly. But I did not know he was on there. I, I remember him from things like uh, Celebrity Rehab um, and just kind of a, I don't want to say a Hollywood joke, but a, a lot of people poke fun at him because of how he is. And I did not realize he had had a brain injury. So that, that would explain, you know, a lot of the way he, he acts. So fill us in on, on Gary Busey. Okay. Um, so in December of 1988, uh, he was severely injured in a motorcycle accident. He was not wearing a helmet. His skull was fractured and he suffered permanent brain damage. While he's still acting, um, it, it's definitely a difference between seeing him in movies such as the Buddy Holly story before the accident and seeing him in things such as Entourage, Celebrity Apprentice, um, you know, now. Um, he went on Celebrity Rehab with Dr. Drew in 2008 because he does or did have an addiction. And uh, Dr. Drew referred him to psychiatrist Charles Sophie. Sophie suspected that Busey's brain injury has a greater effect on him than was realized. He described it essentially as weakening Gary Busey's mental filters, which caused him to speak and act impulsively. So he recommended that um, Busey take Depakote and Busey agreed. Now, again, we are not doctors, so we are not recommending any type of medications. I'm just sharing with you all the information that is out there on this. Um, unfortunately, in September of 2023, he left the scene of a car accident he caused by hitting the driver's bumper. Um, he wasn't charged with a crime because police tracked him down to his house and he willingly cooperated with providing information. But again, may not have been really thinking when he decided to uh, leave that uh, car accident because, you know, the decision making filter sometime, you know, aren't working properly as a result of the head injury. Yeah, there's several times that even in my life, I'll do things and my wife will say, why did you do that? And I, I think it's something that many people in our situation um, deal with. And we we have time. Let's let's delve into Henry VIII. And if we can't finish it, we can, we'll definitely do an, an entire second episode on him but I mean obviously King of England um, six wives wow <laughs> but yeah you've did some really good research here and you you know your stuff about this so Phil is selling well I'm a bit of a history geek so definitely wanted to do Henry the eighth um, he suffered multiple concussions in his life. Um, but medical experts and historians narrowed it down to four specific events, one of which was a jousting tournament that significantly impacted him. In addition to his various physical ailments, 
ailments, the jousting accidents believed to have caused Henry's mood swings, which had a dramatic effect on his personality and his temperament. According to a study, his history and body morphology may have been the result of traumatic brain injury after the jousting accident in 1536, and that's about a few years before he passed away. Um, this analysis identifies significant behavioral changes noted in his later years, including the multiple marriages. For those of you not familiar with Henry VIII, there's a saying about the six wives based on their outcome, annulled, beheaded, died, annulled, beheaded, survived. Um, he probably died from a combination of inflammation, chronic pyogenic separation, edema, and a chronic septic inflammation and infection of the bone. So while his death wasn't directly associated with the head injury, it definitely caused personality changes and a traumatic brain injury for the remainder of his life. Yeah. Yeah, we could do a whole show just on just on his wives alone. You know, all that. It swings uh, they had to deal with during uh, his marriages, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. I think everyone that knows of Henry VIII associates him with the beheading of the wife. And I mean, I just I remembered the Anne Boleyn um, and there was another. Uh, Catherine Howard and ironically, they were distant cousins. Really? Yes. So they ended both ended up with the same fate. So just a little. I guess. <laughs> but yeah, I was familiar with Anne Boleyn, but I couldn't remember the other person at all. But yeah, and then I think there was one other thing that we discussed. Um, you had found what you we think is the earliest documented brain injury. Um. Yeah, uh, from the Roman Empire back in 41 AD, I believe, with uh, uh, Caligula's daughter. Um, unfortunately, there was a successful assassination attempt on the family, and she was only um, two at the time when she passed away, and it was from a brain injury. Um, so I thought that was as morbid and disturbing as that is. I thought it was fascinating that they were able to trace something that significant that far back. Yeah, that is fascinating. We have just a few minutes left of our time, so um, before we go, we do want to uh, encourage you to drop us a like and a comment below, and please don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you'll be notified when we have you know future episodes come out. We plan and definitely share with your uh, social media community because you know. Knowledge is power, you know, awareness helps us as brain injury survivors. Absolutely. And this podcast is your voice just as much as it is ours. You know, our desire, our desire to do this was to get brain injury awareness out there. And the best way to get it out there is for people that see this to share it. Because there are so many of us, especially in our group. And how many people is in our group now? I think it's 1,200 people, approximately. Yeah, it's up there. So, I mean, this is this is our, our chance to give them a platform. And uh, there has been a lot of people that's expressed their desires to join us. And we're going to do some future shows with some of the survivors in our group so they can have their voice heard as well. So um, just please drop us a line. Let us know. Um, what you what you want to hear about? You know, yeah. Any comments about the show whatsoever? And then Ashley, is if there's anything that you'd like to uh, discuss in closing as well. Um, I was just gonna say that um, it will be probably in the new year where we will choose people to interview. Uh, that will first come based on our post-concussion syndrome support group because that's how we met and they've already given us feedback. So first come, first serve. But if you are a brain injury uh, survivor or know someone who is and wants to be interviewed, definitely comment below and we will definitely reach out to you. Um, but in the interim, we're just going to do some topics that affect people with brain injuries. But definitely comment below about that, too, because we don't want to just pick and choose what we think is interesting. We want to pick and choose what you guys find interesting as well. So you have a lot to look forward to. 
Yes, I could have said that better myself. Yeah, again, just drop us a like, comment, subscribe, you know, bells, what, you know, all that good stuff for the YouTube wants us to do. But uh, do that, and we will be back with you guys on the next podcast. And I think we're going to be discussing memory. So that's going to be, we could probably do a bunch of shows on memory alone. <laughs> so, yeah. Thank you guys for joining us. We're so glad that you took a few minutes out to listen to us. And uh, we hope that you found this information uh, interesting, beneficial, and educational. So that's our, our main goal. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Rob. And I'm Ashley, traumatic brain injury warrior. Thank you, Amazon. Happy holidays. Yes. I love this.